So this example is actually very interesting because we are going to look at two different type of uh, LEDs and they will switch on and switch off in turn. This is a traffic light. Lah, okay, so if you've ever found yourself sitting at a corner, you know, you're waiting for the light to turn green, you will notice that your traffic light Oh, it's a traffic light. So let's say you are waiting for the green light to turn on. They are arranged with bright spots, you know, like LED lights. So all of your lights, are the traffic lights are LED lights. And we kind of like want them to turn on and turn off at a specific time interval. Maybe green light for 30 seconds, red light for 30 seconds, etc, etc. But how do we make this happen? And how do we use operational amplifier as a timing circuit? So I'm just going to write here, big, big. Op M, comparator, connection or comparator circuit as timing circuit. So we're going to use the Op M to time. Because last time, right, when pe before people had the Op M, what they'll do is they'll just hire someone to change the traffic light color. <laughs> do you want that job? You have a stopwatch, then every 30 seconds, you press a switch, the light change color. Or even older, before light, they will have a signboard. You know, they hold a sign like the security guard in front of schools. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, obviously, this job has been taken over by the op -Ms. Computers are taking over all our jobs. All right. So, let's start off the question first, nice and easy. All right. And it says that the op -M may be used as the part of the processing unit in an electronic sensor. Okay, so processing unit, in this case, the example of your processing unit is S to use for timing. So instead of uh, having a human doing the timing, you will have the OM do it for you. Lah. But what are the properties of your ideal OM? So remember, we memorized or we uh, went through a list of the properties of the ideal OM. So in this case, you can state any three. Lah. Like, for example, the first thing I think about is saturation. No? The OM easily V, v plus and V minus, the input or slight change or immediately saturate. Lah. So I would say infinite gain. Okay. And the best kind of OM is uh, no lag. No lag. So I will say infinite slew rate you can write anything you want okay and then what else i know that uh, don't care what the signal frequency is okay the gain will be the same whether the frequency is one hertz or 1000 hertz so this will be infinite bandwidth i know there are other things that you can write regarding the impedances but i just feel like writing this tree lah. all right so let's look at b this is a comparator circuit Okay, so they're very nicely, they tell you the type of circuit. How do you know it's a comparator circuit? There's no connection between the output and the input. So we are comparing, let me underline, comparator circuit. What are we comparing? Uh? We are comparing the uh, inverting input, V1. So I'm going to write here that V1 is equal to V minus. All right, because this one is connected here. Bloop. And comparing this to the non-inverting input, which is V plus. So this one is connected here. V plus. Right? So these are, these are the two things that we are comparing. V1 and V2. Okay. Second thing that uh, we should take note of is the supply. So we will saturate at plus minus 5 volt. Uh, these are your only option. Your V out is either positive 5 or negative 5. All right. So it says here, in one of the application, V2, V2 is kept constant at positive 1.5 volt. And the variation with time T of V1 is shown in the graph. V2 is also shown. Okay, so V2 is kept at 1.5 volt. I write first, huh? important information, 1.5 volt. Okay, and then they say that they will show V1 inside the graph. All right, let's look at the graph. Oh, it looks so interesting. You can see this uh, sinusoidal wave pattern, right? And you can see this is your V1, and this is, I mean, this is your V1, and this is your V2. Okay, so your V1 is the sinusoidal wave function, and the V2 is the constant 1.5 volt. 
you are thinking, Miss, you see, oh, they can draw like this, meh. Uh, question paper can draw, you cannot. Okay? You cannot because you are a student. So you are actually plotting the graph. They probably plotted this in the computer. Lah. All right? So this is 1.5. Just got to trust. All right? So this V2 is set at 1.5 volt. Positive 1.5 volt. And interestingly, V1 is an alternating current, right? Because this is potential, ma. Potential. So V1 is an alternating current. So this V1 is actually AC. Uh, but what is more important is, one of these is inverting input, one of these is non-inverting input. So let us check it out. Which one is inverting and which one is non-inverting? So if you stare at this, the non-inverting input is V2. So 1.5 is V plus or V2 is V plus and V1 is V minus. Okay, so I will label that now for you. V plus is 1.5. So let me zoom out a bit. All right, so this V2 happens to be, okay, the, the value is not important. This one, is equal to V plus. And I use red color, ma, so I'll stick to the red, okay? Nah. This one is V plus, okay? So this entire line is V plus. Uh, inverting, sorry, non-inverting input. V1 is the inverting input, okay? So you check the connection, all right? So based on where we input V1 and V2. V1 we put inside the inverting, V2 we put in the non-inverting. Okay, I guess if it makes you feel happier, I'll crop over the circuit for you. Okay, we're back. So the circuit is here, so you can check law. V minus is this one. Okay, and I think it will be better if I trace out the colors. It's easier for you to see, but I'm going to use a slightly different color. For this V minus, I'm going to put purple, okay. All right. So this one would be V1, the alternating current. So I'm going to trace it out now for you. Okay, so I've traced out the sinusoidal wave function so that it's easier for you to see. I'm going to repeat the same thing for the uh, direct 1.5 voltage. That would be your non-inverting input. I'm going to use orange. Okay, you will see why later. Lah. All right. All right, so you can see now I have drawn out the V plus and V minus or the inverting and non-inverting input so that it looks clearer to see. And don't forget, we are comparing between these two. So let us let us continue to read the question first before we start comparing them, okay? Two LEDs, R and G, are connected to the output. Okay, sure. You have LEDs, R and G, I presume red and green traffic lights, okay, connected to the output of the op-amp, such that R emits light for a longer time. Hmm, red light longer than G. On figure 9.1, draw the symbols of the diode connected to the output of the op-amp and label the diodes R and G. But before that, wow, how can I skip this? Show the variation of time T, the output potential. All right, let's do this part first. Let's think about how do we draw your V out? Oh, so exciting, so spicy. Look at this oscillating one. Okay, let's go. So let's think about V out first. I'm going to look at this V out here. A few things about the V out that you should know is this V out is bounded by the supply. So you only got two options, plus minus 5 volt. So the V out will be positive 5 volt if V plus bigger than V minus. Or non-inverting bigger than inverting that means the signal will not be inverted positive okay second option here negative 5 volt this one if v minus is bigger than v plus so we check out the sign this one to this one this one to this one Okay, so basically uh, now we want to know which one is bigger. But the good news here is uh, V plus is V2, right? So actually what we are looking for is we are saying that, so if you see here, now here, here, V plus is V2. Uh, v minus is V1. 
So because of this, I guess I could write um, V plus is V2. So we want V2 to be bigger than V1. And for this one, we will want V1 to be bigger than V2. Miss, we can tell uh, from the graph, of course. Why did we draw the graph in the first place? Why did I so painstakingly trace out? We can tell that there are regions where the purple graph is below the orange graph and there are regions where the purple graph is above the orange graph. So if you're a type where you are a very visual person, you can see that the places where V2 is greater than V1 is when orange is greater than purple. Okay, so let us look at all the places where the orange graph V2 is bigger than the purple graph V1. All right, we're going to draw that as positive 5 volt because V plus is bigger. Ma. So since V2 is V plus and V plus is bigger, okay, let me make sure you can see in the screen. V2 is V plus and V plus is greater. All the parts where the orange is above the purple, 5 volt positive. Okay, so I'm going to draw out this 5 volt in a black color, blue color, oh, yeah, blue. Lah. Okay, so 5 is here. Uh, paper 5 cannot draw half a box, but paper 4 can. So this part here right in the middle, until this middle point, the orange line is above the purple line. So this will be 5 volt. Here to here. Right in the middle. Okay. I zoom in too much, the graphic card cannot handle. It is a sadness. But this is where the intersection is. So you should actually refer to the intersection of the graphs. Okay. So based on the intersection of the graph, uh, we should be able to tell at which point is the graph, the orange graph above the purple graph. Okay, weird things are happening to my OneNote because of the net. Are you okay, OneNote? All right, there we go. We are done. So I'm going to zoom in a lot so that I can sketch it accurately, which is which shows you how much they care about you uh, changing the sign at the appropriate position. So this one is halfway, ma, right? Whoops, what happened? Let me check some stuff. Okay, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but apparently everything is deleted. So I think instead of me drawing it again, I will just change my modus operandi. Again, laggy laptops can't be helped. Anyway, this is the orange one. I use highlighter lah. Highlighter apparently, for some unknown reason, takes up less RAM. <laughs> okay, so this is the orange one. And you want the orange one to be above the purple one, okay? Be below, above the V1. So this one is your V1. Right? So you can, just based on this, see that there are large chunks of time where the purple graph is below the orange graph. And here, the purple graph is above the orange graph before dipping below the orange graph and coming up but doesn't surpass the orange one. Nah. That is a big set. And give me a sec because I cannot deal. I noticed that drawing this kind of sign curve is a lot like drawing eyebrows. So if you have a girlfriend or you yourself draw or boyfriend, no judgment here. You draw your own eyebrows. See, eyebrow on flick. So whenever this purple graph drop below the orange color graph, that is where the polarity flip. So we were saying that V plus have to be greater for positive 5 volt. I'm going to swap to blue. Please pray for my laptop. So this one is 5. It looks like it intersects actually at 2.5. How much more do I need to zoom in? Nah, here. Load. Okay, there we go. So it intersect here. This is the intersection point. All right. So in the exam, try to align to the intersection point. They will give you a very big graph. Lah. Okay. So this one, you just dotted line and draw. Lah. Okay. Halfway. And then when the purple is bigger than the orange, this purple is V minus the invert input. Meaning now the output will invert to negative 5. So everything here until I guess here, so I'm going to just 
use a small eraser to silently delete this a bit so I can see where the intersection is. Okay, the intersection is at the halfway mark. So here, all the way, and here the halfway one. Draw together with me. Lah. Don't just watch me draw. I feel very lonely. Draw together with me. Okay, halfway. Ah, so now the purple graph, which is V minus. If you always forget, then you write here. Oh, this is V minus. Okay, V minus is bigger than V plus. So the output will be negative 5. Negative 5, 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 negative 5. So if you get the idea, you can pause the video and draw the whole thing. And fast forward. Okay, because I'm just going to continue. So right now, after this point, the orange is above the purple one again. So I'm going to repeat the drawing. In fact, I can see that it's always half a box. So I won't have to delete again. So it's half a box to half a box. That's why it's a bit of a pain to draw. You use your ruler, okay? But I'm also feeling like maybe it's not half. Let me check. Slightly less than half. Hiyo. CIE so painful one. Dot, 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 dot. So V plus is above V minus. So this one is positive 5, positive 5, positive 5 all the way. Please use a ruler in the exam. Okay. Boom. Okay. Next slide. Here. For a short period in time, this one will flip over to negative 5. Why would it flip over to negative 5? Well, because right now your V2, sorry, your V1 is smaller than your V2. And if you forget, again, I write for you. V1 was your V plus. Ah, yeah, I go here, I can see that. So at this center portion here, the one on top that is bigger is negative. That's why the output will be negative 5. Alright, so where is negative 5 again? Ah? Forgot that one. Ah, negative 5 is here. 2 and 2 and a half. Okay. So 2 and a half here. Take your ruler. Dot, 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 dot. Two and a half here and negative five volt. All right, repeat process. What do you think? At the final phase, the orange line, which is V plus, is above V minus. So your output is going to be positive all the way until the graph end law, until the signal ends. Signal ends here. So I'm going to end here. Nah. Ding, 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 ding. After that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happens. No graph to draw. Okay, let us zoom out. So, you will get this shape. The dotted line, you want to draw vertical, also can. You want to draw dotted, also can. Doesn't matter. All right? As long as your output is plus minus 5. Okay? And you can see that there are certain times where the time is very short. And there are certain times where the time is very long. Okay, that's why this graph uh, is worth four marks because uh, you need to be able to sketch out a lot of properties about the V out. So if you're wondering where the four mark is, I will show you the mark scheme. Or rather, I will write the mark scheme because pasting it might kill my computer. Mm, life is tough. Life is tough, guys. When your computer don't cooperate. Okay, anyway, one mark if you draw a bunch of square wave. Square or rectangle wave. <laughs> So, as long as you draw a square wave, I don't care how you draw, I don't care what you draw, at least you know it's a square wave, so you get one mark. All right. Second mark is when your uh, saturation or your V out is 5 volt, plus minus 5 volt. That means you didn't V out at some weird number. It's plus minus 5 because you follow the supply. This should be the other mark. Okay, this is one mark. The other mark will be switch over. When you switch from positive to negative. So V out, polarity, switch at the right time. Meaning this switching will happen whenever V1 and V2 is equal. 
that is the underlying principle, right? You have I have talked about this in the term is example. So when V1 and V2 is equal, that is the time where it switches from positive 5 to negative 5. V1 and V2 equal negative 5 to positive 5. Okay? At the right time, which is when V plus is equal to V minus or V1 equal to V2. And the fourth and final mark is the polarity of V out. So this means like here, this part is supposed to be positive. If you draw negative, you will lose one mark. If you switch over at the correct place, then okay. All right. So this is actually a very generous one. So whenever they ask you to draw some uh, output for operational amplifier, it's four marks for not quite a lot of work if you actually understand what is happening. Basically, what we're doing is we're comparing. We are stating the domain where this function is bigger than this function. So those of you who do maths, this is actually stating the domain of a function. Okay, that's why operational amplifier are all in your calculator. There are a lot of OPMs inside this baby here doing all the calculation for you. <laughs> but someone actually designed the chip first. Lah. All right, anyway, we're not going to put LED such that R emit light longer time than G. So which one should be R? Let's stare at our screen. Oh, of course, miss, this must be R. This must be R. Right, because this positive 5 volt occurs at a longer time than the negative 5 volt. So meaning this one is G. I mean, when the pen decides to change color, this one will be G and this one will be G. Are you G? Are you? Nope. Change color. Okay, hang on. Let me pause the record. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> G and G. Okay, so sometimes I have to pause the recording to let the computer sort itself out. It's quite hot now. Ooh, the OMs are frying. <laughs> okay, so now we have this RRGG, and I guess if you want to, this is also R, but don't care. So I could highlight this for you, all right, to show you that this red light, this is red light. And this red light is a longer period of time. Okay. Ta -da! While waiting for the computer to sort itself out, <laughs> <sighs> anyway, I have already highlighted. So you can see that you want the red light to be longer, so you would take the red light as the positive 5 volt output. Alright, so as long as it's positive 5 volt, you will get red light. So I guess I'm going to just uh, adjust the pen a bit if it cooperates. Can you please? Okay, there we go. This is 5 volt. So we're going to draw the LED such that it is forward bias when the output is positive. Lie, lie, lie. Let's draw the LED. All right, so we're going to draw this forward bias. So this is positive 5 volt. So the LED should point like this. Okay, pointing downwards. I guess if you want to be like extra accurate, then we need to rub this a bit and put a resistor here to protect R. Please label, okay? Protect the diode from large currents. And then you can draw the light pointing outwards. Actually, you don't need this circle, my bad. We don't need this circle. Okay, so draw the LED to protect the, I mean, sorry, draw the resistor to protect the LED. Okay, something like this. And Negative 5 volt will be reverse. So current, ma, think about current. This is 0 volt. Current will flow from high potential to low potential. So this is when the red light will turn on. Whereas for the green light, okay, this will flip. Just reverse this. Flip. Okay, nah, draw this one going out, though. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, so this is still zero volt. And current will flow from high potential, which is zero, to low potential, which is negative five. Okay, so that's how you know this one is forward bias. This one is reverse bias. Think about the direction of current flow. Positive to zero. High to low. Zero to negative. Zero is higher than negative because this side is grounded. 
Okay, so hopefully this part is not that confusing. You already know how to draw the output. Remember to think about the bias and the current flow. All right, so current flow from positive to zero, meaning the arrow must point from positive to zero, high to low. Arrow will also point from zero to negative because zero is higher than negative. Okay, so we are finished the diagram. Okay, uh, where is the three marks? I'll write here for you. Stay alive, computer. You can do this just a bit more. Three marks. One mark is for the symbol of LED. If you don't know how to draw the symbol for LED, this is the symbol. Okay. Second mark is for the diode connected between V out and earth. So you connect between this V out and this earth. And finally, the last one is the polarity la, or the meaning you didn't accidentally swap the red and the green one. Oh, miss, you forgot to label. Yes, I forgot to label. Better quickly label because during exam, you ain't going to use color pen like me. You will use pencil. So please label R for longer, green for, I mean G for shorter. Okay, so R is longer once again because I can actually tell nah, that the output is positive 5. The output will stay positive 5 longer than it stays negative 5. Alright, so that is this part. Okay, and that's the entirety of the question. So this is how we actually uh, allow the red light and green light to happen. We feed an alternating current into the traffic light. Okay, and I think some of you can see that there are a few changes that we can make to this circuit to change the switching. So for example, I'm like, actually, oh, no need red light so long one. Because the other junction only got two cars, but this junction got like 40 cars. So we should increase the green light. But I am not going to think about this. Uh, I have a circuit board. I want to change the connection of this LED. Uh. Very fun, eh? you know, I need to go inside. I need to take the wire and I need to unsolder the wire and reconnect. Very headache. So the easiest way to achieve this, let's say I want to increase this and decrease this, is to change the reference potential, this V+. plus. Don't put 1.5 lah, put negative 1.5. If you put negative 1.5, then the green light is longer liao. So if you've ever found yourself in a traffic light and then you're like waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, you can actually hack the system. You go and find this uh, reference potential, you flip the polarity of the battery to negative 1.5, then the green light will be longer and the red light will be shorter and then it will be such a troll. So here are the extension questions. I'll type them out for you. Okay, so the first one would be... Okay, I'm just going to type extension. One. State and explain. the duration of R LED emitting light when A V2 V2 is increased B V2 is decreased and I guess C the frequency of the V1, which is, by the way, an alternating current, is increased. Okay, so stay and explain. What will happen to the, basically, changes of the duration? Changes, if any. So the duration of the RLED emitting light when V2 is increased, when V2 is decreased, or when the frequency is increased or decreased. These are all the extension questions that they can, that I would think of asking if let's say I'm setting the paper. All right, so what happens when this value go up? What happens when this value go down? Or what happens if I change the alternating current's frequency? All right, so that's it. Uh, think about this. Comment down below if you have questions. Uh, this that's it for this question. All right. So what did we learn here? We learned that uh, for op amps, when we use it in a comparator circuit, we are comparing the 
inverting input and the non-inverting input, meaning we are comparing the purple and the orange graph. When the orange graph, which is the non-inverting input, is bigger, your output is positive, red LED turn on. And vice versa, when the non-inverting is smaller, the whole thing will be inverted, green LED will turn on because the output is negative 5 volt. You should know how to draw the LEDs based on what biases it is. And finally, you should know that you should be able to tell this is the extension that I will probably record in a second video. Uh, what happens when I increase V plus or V2, decrease V plus or V2, computer is lagging, that's why like this. Okay, decrease V plus or V2, or change the frequency of this purple color AC. All right, so we can see that there are many different ways to talk about this. And that will be in the extension video. So this is, this is it for the comparator circuit. If you find this example helpful, please uh, let us know what you think. Like and subscribe. We love to hear from our viewers. Uh, if you need help or any questions, you can reach out to us, reach out to me, especially if I'm teaching you, or reach out to anyone, share the video so that all of us can learn physics together, whether you're in Malaysia or other places. Come lah, let's learn together. Life is already hard enough in the pandemic. Computer is already struggling in the pandemic. All right, so that's it. I guess sometimes things wouldn't work, wouldn't it? Oh, well, anyway, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.